So everyone knows they're here for a tutorial on visualization with Bouquet. I will give it, yay! So I'll hand it over to Christina. Um, enjoy. Hi. Yeah. So good morning. Um, I'm hopefully you all um, more comfortable in this room. Um, no pressure. <laughs> um, so I'm glad there's this excitement uh, about learning bokeh and visualizations in Python. And I'm glad that you all decided to choose this talk. Um, so the title of the talk is Interactive Data Visualizations with Python. Um, um, a little bit about me. Uh, I also work at Continuum Analytics. I'm a data scientist there. I'm originally from Barcelona, but I'm living in Austin, Texas right now. I just uh, flew here uh, yesterday morning, so I'm still a little bit jet lagged. Um, uh, my, a little bit about my background. Um, I started a master's, didn't finish it because I joined Continuum um, and I couldn't reject the offer um, in data mining and BI. Uh, before that, I was a process engineer at Procter & Gamble, doing a lot of data analysis for uh, operations research and manufacturing processes. And after that, I was a business analyst for a bank in Spain. Um, I, I did a master in industrial engineering at UBC Barcelona. And I, I actually did my master's thesis at uh, RTH Aachen uh, for six months at the Ian Energy Research Center. I have this website where you can find several of other of my talks. I gave um, recently uh, another talk at a Pi Data event uh, in Dallas uh, on Conda and how you can use Conda for um, your data science projects. So let's start about uh, just giving an introduction to Bokeh. How many people here have uh, heard about the library before? How many have used it? Okay, um, so kind of my, my goal um, here today for this tutorial, I know it's not very comfortable uh, to work on your laptop here, so kind of, uh, it's gonna be kind of an like extended talk, and there's a lot of examples that you can try to run yourself. I'm not gonna make it very heavily on you uh, writing a lot because the conditions, uh, you know, you don't have tables and it can be a little uh, uncomfortable, uh, and I don't see everyone having uh, their laptop here, but we, I'm gonna point you to the examples, where they are, how you can run them, how you can tweak them um, to do whatever they are. Um, so the, act, the goal for today is get you to know um, Bokeh, uh, point you to the right directions so you know what to look for in the library for the things that you might need. Um, and I have to say, they've, they've done a great improvement in the documentation in recent, uh, recent uh, months. Um, and so the, the Bokeh PyData org is where the documentation is hosted, and you can go there and, uh, and, and search for whatever you need. They're also pretty active in the mailing list, so if you have any questions, there's a, a great, a very large team um, at Bokeh that's growing and that they give feedback uh, you know, pretty fast, and the community is growing too, so there's uh, also other people that are in learning Bokeh can also provide you some, some guidance. Um, so the, there's a, actually a Bokeh organization on GitHub and where all the repositories are and uh, a Twitter account if you want to, uh, you know, um, shout, shout out at the developers of Bokeh and tell them how awesome they are. So first, let's kind of take a look what, what, what Bokeh is. And if you go to the GitHub repository, the organization, you're going to see several repositories, not just one. So I kind of want to introduce it and, and um, make sure you understand uh, what this uh, bokeh um, ecosystem is. So, mainly as we, we um, saw, uh, bokeh is an interactive um, visualization library written, um, written in several languages, and we'll see how everything fits together. But the important part, if we compare it to other visualization libraries that exist in the ecosystem, is that it targets the browser. And it targets um, being able to, to deploy these visualizations and share them um, in the browser setting. So when we think about the browser, we're thinking about HTML and something that, uh, that can render HTML. So in order to do that, there's this library called Bokeh.js, which is a JavaScript library that, giving a blob of JSON, is able to render uh, a visualization. So 
in order to write this JSON output, you could just like use Bokeh.js as is, and if you're a JavaScript developer, you can use it um, to write the visualizations in, the, in, in, in your language, like JavaScript. But if you're not, and you still want to be able to target the browser and get these um, cool visualizations that you can share with others, uh, but just you know, but just having an HTML page and, and a way to serve it, um, then you can use all these wrappers or, and bindings that people have um, developed in order to render to output this JSON that then can, Bokeh JS can understand and render it. So we have the main, of course, um, Bokeh was uh, meant, was um, targeted in the Python ecosystem. So. That's like one of the, the core uh, libraries. And that's the Python banding. It's what we call plain bokeh. And that's the, the main, uh, my main tutorial talk today is going to um, be about this bokeh Python um, library. But people you know, in, in other uh, languages have also written uh, bindings to be able to you know, use their language to, to uh, visualize and output these cool HTML pages and visualizations. So people have created uh, R bindings, and we call that R bokeh, it's also in the organization, for Lua, Bokeh Lua, Julia. So any language that can output a JSON blob that can Bokeh.js can understand is able to, will, will be able to do it. You just need a developer of the language that's willing to write the, the wrapping for you. So a little bit about the, this tutorial and how I've, I've planned it. Um, as I said, we're going to focus. We're not going to talk about the Bokeh JavaScript. We're not going to talk about other um, bindings. We're going to focus on uh, the Bokeh Python interface. And in this library, we, um, we encounter different interfaces, different levels of, of APIs that you can use. One is called the charts. Another one that we're going to see is called the plotting. And then the low-level uh, bokeh objects that are called models. We're going to see that those interfaces and see uh, why, when you would want to use each of the different interfaces and um, how different they are. Then um, there's different outputs that uh, bokeh can give you. You can output a file, an HTML file. You can output to the uh, IPython notebook. Um, and then there's this bokeh server that we're also going to talk more about in more detail. Another, another aspect of bokeh that people are interested in is, well, what if I, you know, I'm a web developer. I have a Django app. I have a Flask app. How do I add a bokeh uh, visualization into my application? We're also going to talk about that. Then other people, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have already have a lot of work already done in other visualization libraries like Seaborn, uh, you know, uh, ggplot, matplotlib. We have a compatibility layer that allows you to transform those visualizations that you already have written in those libraries into a bokeh plot. We're also going to see how we can do that. Um, and then finally, we're going to see a little bit. Uh, we're going to go around. Um, you know what what uh, bokeh tools are, um, how we can manage interactions without needing a server, um, how we can lay out visualizations in a type of dashboard, um, and then uh, what kind of properties we can uh, use to style our plots differently than what comes by default. So I hope you're excited. This is going to be kind of the tutorial. It's mainly going to be me give, for each of these sections, giving a uh, like a, a brief theory overview of what, what there is, and then viewing, viewing examples and viewing code and viewing how we can tweak it. So how do you set up um, Bokeh? So you have um, two options. There's Conda install Bokeh. How many people here know what Conda is? Okay. How many people don't know what Conda is? OK. So how many people know the difference between Anaconda and Conda? OK. So um, just like a brief introduction, um, one of the easiest way to uh, get Bokeh is if you already have the Anaconda Python distribution, it comes with it. 
And then Conda is the package manager in Anaconda that allows you to install uh, dependencies. Um, and it's pretty neat because it's language agnostic, so you can Conda install. Right now we have a lot of support with R, so you can Conda install R, Conda install Node.js, Conda install um, other languages, Scala. Anything can be converted into this Conda package, and um, it's pretty neat to manage, especially if you have dependencies that are uh, on different languages, and you need a, kind of a requirements TXT, but uh, that's able to manage not only Python libraries, but uh, any other ki kind of dependency. You can have this um, same kind of file format for everything. Um, if you don't like, for some reason, you don't like Conda, you don't like Anaconda, uh, you can also pip install Bokeh. But be careful that there's some SciPy dependencies. Make sure that you know how to install that properly. Um, I'm leaving you two links f with more information about the installation. So um, this tutorial is um, available online, um, chdog.github.io. PyData 2015 Berlin Bokeh. Um, so you can follow along if you like, and you get the uh, URLs and links and everything. Um, the, it's also in a GitHub repository. So in the GitHub repository, you're going to find the uh, any data that I use in the examples, all the examples. Oh, I think my internet connection is not. I think we're all, we're, we're all connected. So there's the examples here, and so all the examples that I'm going to use are going to be in this folder, um, also divided by section, so you know um, when you are uh, uh, here. So you have going to ha have each of the different sections that I've mentioned. You're going to have uh, examples that come with it uh, that you can run yourself. Um, uh, because mm, it's not just Bokeh, but it has other dependencies. Uh, I have this environment YAML, which is um, the, the requirements TXT for uh, that's able to generalize and not just be able to handle Python dependencies, but any kind of, if you have a MongoDB dependency, things like that, you can also add it here as your dependency that will, will manage for you. So that I use uh, current environments a lot. Um, I, that's the, the talk I gave at PyData uh, Dallas, so if you're interested, in knowing more about Conda and how you can use it in your workflows, um, you can you can. Uh, it's the slides are on my website and the video is also available at the PyData uh, YouTube page. So, so um, to set up the tutorial, uh, all the dependencies that we're going to use are available in the Anaconda free distribution. Um, so for, for people who uh, you know the, the difference. Anaconda comes with a Python um, version. Uh, Conda, which is a package manager that's going to allow you to install other dependencies. And it comes with already a bunch of packages uh, for scientific computing and uh, data anal analytics. Uh, because that's like pretty a heavyweight dependency, because you have all these packages. An alternative is if you can just use mini Conda, which just comes with Conda and Python, and then you can manage yourself what you want to install, what, what of the, which ones of the libraries you have in Anaconda you'd like to have in your environment. And you can do that with this, um, with this environment YAML file that I just showed you. And with just doing conda and create and source activate uh, bokeh tutorial, you're going to get all the uh, dependencies without having the, uh, with the a lightweight um, alternative to downloading the full Anaconda distribution. Um, when you install Bokeh, Bokeh comes with some examples, and the examples um, you need to download the sample data in order to run some of them. So here's the the code to um, download the the sample data. I'm going to be using uh, Bokeh version 090, so just make sure you have that before you try to run the examples. Uh, there has been a lot of development. Uh, there was a, a pretty um, Big change in zero around zero seven. So if you have you use anything previous to that, a lot of things are going to be deprecated or um, not work in zero nine. So the first the the first section we're going to talk about is charts and charts is this high level API that allows you to draw kind of these um, um, these visualizations that are kind of standard, right? Scatter plots. Uh, Area plots, bar plots, time series, 
uh, box plot, donut, dot. Um, these are the ones that are currently available. And the, um, the neat thing about charts is uh, you need, uh, there's a lot of default that comes by. And just by passing a data frame or a dictionary or an umpire array, you're able to generate this, uh, these plots. And Bokeh is a little bit smart, knows like, you know, what you mean when you pass uh, you know, a data frame uh, for a scatter. Uh, you can pass a group by to generate a scatter plot. Uh, and knows like that you mean that the, the, the labels are going to be different groups and things like that. So let me, uh, if I had internet, these links should work, but just knowing that's just, it's just me or everyone out of internet. Okay, okay so um, let me, I can also build the, Here. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna build the, the documentation from the bouquet. So so in um, just so you see no. the Um, kind of the, this is the the repository, uh, the Bokeh repository that's available on GitHub. You can clone it. Um, there's the the Sphinx documentation here. And you have the readme of how to um, build a doc. So if in cases like this where you're uh, run out of the internet, you can. Uh, uh, Build the documentations anyway, so I can show you make surf. Oh. oh, I think it's popped up. Well, now I'm showing you how I use Conda. Um, also. No, I have the, I know, I have the, I'm in the Inno space, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What's up? <laughs> Good. Nobody switches. Okay. Thank. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so now I can show you the online documentation.
Okay, sorry about that. I got, I got internet. Um, so this is the uh, page, the bokeh page, um, where you can find a lot of the information. Um, and we were talking about the charts. Um, so um, I'm just going to give you some examples following the, the documentation so you can see where you can find it too when, um, when you want. So um, as you see, you have some, some data. Um, um, we're going to go over like the different uh, output possibilities. We've said there were three output, the notebook output of HTML file or output the server. Um, you can use output the file that generates an HTML page with the visualization. Um, and then this uh, line here is the chart uh, where you can pass a line, uh, the data that you've generated, uh, and a bunch of uh, properties of the plot. Um, if you don't use the properties, it's just going to get the default ones. And then you, you show the plot. And that just turns into this you know, simple line example. Um, and pretty much all the uh, charts are um, use this, this simple structure. Um, there's a uh, bar and dot charts. Um, the box plot chart is another example. You pass the data, um, you get you get this. You know, you just have to write um, these four lines of Python code, and you get an HTML page with this nice um, visualization that you can share with 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 others. Um, so, kind of a just a heads up on the state of the charts. Um, the charts interface is pretty much the one of the um, areas that's being uh, heavily developed right now and that's getting improvements. Um, uh, I have to say that the plotting interface that we're going to see next and the models, those are pretty stable at this stage. And, and there's no, uh, there were some uh, heavy refactoring back in 07, but there's no plans on uh, changing or, or any of those because right now that we, we found that um, they're in a, a, a um, stable stage. Um, charts is being heavily developed, so um, just be careful in, in that sense. So one of the benefits of charts, or what the aim is, is being able to generate very fast um, kind of a, this set of default visualizations that exist in this statistics uh, world uh, without having the user make a lot of the work uh, and having a, a nice simple interface for changing things uh, by just passing like title, you know, these properties with height. We have another uh, heat map, this donut, uh, a time series, uh, several time series in the same plot which um, you can just pass as a, um, a pandas data frame with um, different uh, values. So we're going to see these examples. As I said, uh, they're all available under the examples um, in the uh, GitHub repository for this tutorial. And in charts, we're going to see, let's see the time series one. So it's a, uh, um, I, I am, just assuming that people are familiar with the IPython notebook, uh, and I don't have to uh, go over that, but if someone uh, isn't, let me know. Um, so, and how many people here are familiar with pandas and NumPy? Okay, so everyone. Um, so here we have uh, the pandas read CSV from this um, Yahoo charts with that um, uh, is a CSV with uh, pricing um, of uh, different stocks. Um, so if I run this, you'll see here the this uh, Apple data. It's um, just a bunch of uh, time series uh, dates. What was the price of the stock at open, high, low, close? What was the volume of stock? What was the adjustment at closed? Um, at close? Uh, time. So you have this uh, pandas data frame with a time with a date, which is a uh, the your x um, your x value in your chart, and you have a um, one column which you care about that you want to plot. That's going to be your y. 
So it's as simple as passing the data, the two, the two columns that you care about, the x and the y, telling it that your index is actually going to be the date, um, and that it shows the it shows the the plot, and it comes with all the um, cool um, toolbar that we're going to see. Um, and let me zoom in, zoom out. Um, and the ability of, well, we're going to go through all of that. But uh, just with these like five lines of Python code, you're able to generate this, generate an HTML page that you can then serve and, and share. If, you, if, if anyone has questions while I'm going, please feel free to raise your hand and uh, I'll, I'll help you out. So another example of a... Um, maybe a little bit more complex um, data structure. It's uh, this data that uh, that comes with um, different countries uh, in this dictionary, and then how many medals they won at an Olympics game. Um, you can see the country code, and then how many bronzes, how many gold, silvers, how many was the total. Um, so this example just um, does a little bit more, um, just changes a little bit the, the data structures. Um, you output the notebook, and you get this um, order dict that's what the bar is expecting, um, and then what countries that's going to be your x categorical uh, axis. Um, and there are several ways you can input data into these charts. One is the dictionary input. Another one's the pandas data frame. So you can choose, you know, the, the data structure that you're more comfortable with. You just need to check, you know, in these examples that you're passing it uh, with the same uh, kind of structure of like columns uh, or or rows. So so if we so if I, I run this, um, I get this stack bar chart um, with a dictionary input uh, where I can see the countries, how many bronze, silver, gold they got, and the total with you know just running uh, these few uh, charts. Um, as I said, you can also input it as a pandas data frame instead of a dictionary, um, and. Uh, we can see here the uh, pandas input and also stack, and you passed just a, a data fr uh, pandas data frame. If you don't want it uh, stacked and you want it group, then you just need to change um, this stack true to stack false, and you're going to get um, this different orientation. So um, charts, as you see, uh, it's a very simple way, a very high-level interface of running, um, of having this kind of visualization, a histogram, uh, you know, NumPy, uh, random, uh, you have a distribution of, uh, random distribution, give it uh, uh, mean, mean zero, standard deviation zero five, um, and you can see this plot and then add to it, um, visualize it as a pandas um, data input on array, um, and also have uh, this nice overlaying of the theoretical uh, distribution to be able to compare. So, yeah, question. Uh, so, so to me, you talked about being able to get this up on a website very easily. Yes. Uh, so the, the true advantage of this is just quick deployment to the folks that actually need to see the charts, right? Right. Uh, Right, so there are, um, so you can wrap, uh, so the, the, what you're gonna get as, a, uh, as the chart itself can be wrapped around uh, any, uh, you know, any CSS or any styling that you have. So you can um, add, you know, to Twitter Bootstrap Grid, the di you know, wrapped it around it, uh, wrapped around your diff of your um, 
bokeh plot around it, and that's going to take um, care of that. Um, you also have, um, you can also set the width and height uh, as a, uh, you know, as a, as an option uh, here. So you can uh, manage the those sizes uh, through the th properties. And then there's this um, resize, resize um, tool that you know that in case like. Uh, you know, you didn't take that into account for some, you you know. Um, that resize tool, though, would that be accessible by the viewer of the website? Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So we're gonna see that um, in in the section of like how you embed and how you uh, output mechanisms that you have. Uh, but yeah, you're going to see it just like a div and a script that you can then pass into any of your templates and you can, uh, you know, lay it out or use, use it in a Flask app or, um, you know, any of your, your interfaces. Um, so, so I think, uh, you know, um, if people around here like you know uh, try try out something and it doesn't work, I'm gonna be around all weekend and you know we can discuss or if, or if someone tries something doesn't work, uh, let me know. So, um, uh, so kind of that was all for the chart, just like to get the, a sense of what it is. Um, as I said, here's the documentation and examples for it. Then we have this. Um, plotting interface, which is, uh, I would say, uh, the one of the most like stable parts uh, of Bokeh. Like, has a uh, you know the I API is not going to change um, in the uh, because it has a, a strong model that uh, we build and just like um, just was changed recently in zero seven um, after getting some user feedback. So. Basically, you start in the plotting interface. You start a plot as a figure. Uh, it kind of tries to resemble a little bit with people that are familiar with Mat Matplotlib um, and and this type of libraries. So you initiate a plot with a figure. Um, you know, you can pass in some properties to initialize. Um, and then what you can do to this plot is um, just use the methods that it comes with to uh, add any kind of glyph um, that you that you want. There's um, these are just you know some of them you know asterisks, um, circles, images, patches, um, triangles, and a bunch of more. And you just um, add one to your plot by by doing plot dot you know that method of that glyph that you want to append and the properties of it. You know what's going to be the x, the y, the size, the color. And then you're gonna just um, show it, show plot, uh, being decided what kind of output you want it. If you want the output to be an HTML page, the output to be a notebook inside the notebook, or if you want the output to be managed through the server. And we'll see um, more about the server in in a second. So, um, just a quick. Um, Here's the plotting with the basic glyphs, and this is where you're gonna find information on this interface and how to create um, figures with it. So, as as I said, it's also um, very, it's a little bit lower level than the charts because it doesn't generate this like uh, already designed uh, chart like chart for you, uh, and you have to like be able to like put the pieces together and say, uh, you know. If you want, you know, what kind of glyphs you want, how you want it, if you want to combine several ones in, in one. Um, so you'll see here, output to a file, um, what properties you want, append the circle, and show. Same for a bunch of different types of, of glyphs. Here you have, um, you know, which ones are available. Uh, the reference guide is pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, you can find all the attributes um, on how to use them. So he, you have the line. You can also have multiple lines, um, but just adding more uh, right here and showing. So um, the patches is also a glyph that's used in order to do a lot of the um, visualizations with um, 
countries and, and regions. Um, so you can pass the, um, the XS and YS of all the, of the polygon of the points you want to draw. That's what's used to uh, some of the um, examples in the gallery you're going to see that also is also able to render um, kind of uh, this um, um, geo uh, locations and and with using patches. So you can use multiple patches. That's how we get the um, the regions, um, rectangles, ovals. There's like all the different uh, glyphs that you can append to your plot using this plotting interface. It's pretty. I think that's the interface that most people are using right now. Um, and because it's very easy and very familiar with people that have been using visualization libraries for a while. So, and you can, as I said, you can combine several glyphs, so lines and circles, and you just like uh, use both methods and then show uh, this, uh, this plot, and you're gonna have both the line and the circle. So it's pretty neat if you wanna layer, kind of thinking it as layers that you wanna put into your plot. Um, and here there's a lot of like information like how you want to set your ranges uh, uh, right here. What kind of axis types do you have if it's a daytime axis or if it's a uh, linear axis, if it's a categorical axis. Um, so you have the daytime which we saw with the stocks. Uh, so it actually sees, you know, can understand years uh, and dates and the order of those. Uh, you can also use log scale axis, which a lot of people uh, you know, are also interested in. You can also have twin axis if you have, you, know, you can uh, um, add several axes into one if you have uh, different ranges in, in this, wanting to visualize different ranges in the same, um, in the same plot. And then adding legends. Uh, it's, you can also add legend uh, just by calling the legend and the text that you want to show with the legend. Um, so that's um, pretty neat. So now we've gone through the, the um, two first interfaces, um, the charts, the plotting. Um, well, let me show you if there's some there's some neat ones, uh, some neat examples in the uh, plotting. Um, so um, here we can say we want several um, several lines in the same plot. I just um, pass the line, the date, which is going to be uh, this x-axis, the uh, y, which is going to be this data that I pass, what color, and the legend. And then, you know, I add the title. Uh, then there's a lot of different properties that I can set to um, uh, style, and we're going to see some of them in the styling section. And then um, show show the plot, um, and you get this. Um, same for um, other types, scatter. Um, which is going to have all these dots. And you can kind of see here, you want to compare the correlations of these two trends in stocks and see if um, they're both, how they're, um, what's the correlation between them, you want to visualize that. Um, then you can just um, scatter them and look at it. Um, these ones are, um, um, see it's a measure of glucose on a person um, and you can see the date time and measurements on uh, the glucose so I can um, have these different measurements uh, the, viewing this the how these different values change over over time um, and then I can you know I can style each of the different uh, points separately so I can find, well, give me the dates where um, I was high, and that's what, that's uh, this property here, the ones that are, that you were low, um, and then just plot those, and you plot the entire line 
of all the um, you know all the dates that you uh, you had the measure, and then just by adding um, this scatter on top of it uh, with the highs on the glucose, the size, the color you want to use, the same for um, the lows, uh, and then changing, you know, modifying some of the properties, uh, you get another, you know, this customized uh, plot um, with kind of with relatively um, small amount of Python code. Um, and having other things like if you want to do a rolling sum, you can use the rolling sum in pandas. Um, you know, if you want to drop the uh, NAs and um, just have this uh, line with the index in the range um, and this line. Um, here, just a bunch of um, like simple examples of like scatter, uh, how you change the color, um, how you change the the glyph um, with the marker. Uh, marker is gonna what um, is gonna make ch the glyph change from circle to square, uh, color green. So you you see you can change all those attributes just with the same method. Um, so kind of that's the important part of the plotting interface that uh, you have a lot of these um, properties already there where you, that you can um, play around with. So now uh, we're going to the low interface. That's like the core of Bokeh, which is called the models. And the models are the Bokeh object. Um, everything in Bokeh is a... a Bokeh uh, model. Um, so even if you see the uh, chart interface or the plotting interface, what's underlying there is still a bunch of models um, that uh, are defined in the JSON blob that gets outputted and that Bokeh.js can understand um, and can translate into uh, this visualization in the, on the browser side. So some important um, models in the bokeh sphere. Um, there's what's called sources. Sources are your data, your data input. What's what's the data that you're going to visualize? Um, and they have this uh, this class that's called column data source, um, where you can reference plots to this source. And so plots within the same with the same source can easily um, have link panning and link brushing, and we'll see um, an example of that. So link panning and link brushing is uh, making those two plots dependent on one another just by having the same source. Um, then that's what's called ranges, and ranges are the um, the ranges of your your plot, right? The um, what the how it's gonna what what's the scale that's gonna measure that's gonna go in both sides x and y um, so if you just uh, this data range one this one that's uh, used that's just like it's gonna out of fit to the values of the of your data source then there's the plot model which is the um, it's gonna represent everything that you add to one plot so all the other um, attribute uh, all the other objects uh, and models that you're going to put into the, the plot are going to be con kind of contained into this object that we call plot. Um, and plot has several methods. And that's how you um, attach these other objects which are going to be glyphs, layout properties, and tools into your plot. So um, plot add glyph and add uh, attach to a source and uh, a glyph that's also going to be an object that adds the glyph to your plot in this low-level interface that you can also use. Um, then you have um, things that are related with layout, like axes. Then you're going to append those using the plot add layout method. And you're going to be able to um, put them anywhere you want your plot, below, above, left, or right. 
um, then you're going to also be able to add the tools that you want into your plot. And the tools can be the, a pen tool, a win, uh, wheel zoom tool, uh, and we're going to see all the tools that are available for you. So as I said, um, the glyphs are also object models. So um, if I use uh, in the example, previous example of plot at glyph, um, I'm going to have the source, which is the, the, where the data is contained. That's going to be a column data source. And a circle, which is uh, a glyph class. Um, and this glyph class is going to have properties, like uh, what's, you know, what's the, and it's, each glyph has its own properties, right? A circle is going to have the location of it, but other glyphs can have, uh, you know, a patch glyph is going to have four points and able to, um, in order to wrap around where's the area of where the, the patch is going to be contained. So you have to look at each of the different glyphs to be able to, um, to know what are the arguments that you're going to have to pass with that glyph in order to start it. Um, so you pass, um, you know, th those attributes, um, and then also styling attributes like what's the fill color, what's the size, what's the uh, if you want a, a line color around the circle. Um, axes are also going to be objects that you're going to append to your plot using the add layout, um, and you can pick if you want a linear axis, if you want a log scale axis. Um, Etc. All the tools are also going to be class uh, bokeh object models, and you have like the pen tool, tool to move the uh, be able to move the project the um, plot around the wheel zoom to be able to zoom in and out of it. Um, then when you have all those objects, um, you add them into a document, and a document is kind think of it as an HTML page. Everything that's on that document, uh, everything that you put into that plot, into that HTML page, um, is going to comprehend uh, a document. So it's just a, a way of saying these are all the objects, the bokeh objects, that are going to have to be rendered um, on the client side with the bokeh.js library. Um, and we're going to see that when you're using this interface and when you're using the bokeh server, you're also going to have to um, consider a thing that's called session. And we're going to see in a little bit um, what that, um, what that um, is. So again, we have uh, documentation on the models. And in this bokeh models interface, you're going to, have, you're going to see um, all the things I've talked about and uh, all the, the properties and um, that they have and that you should uh, initialize or that you can initialize um, if you want. So, you know, each of the different classes of the different glyphs have a bunch of attributes, uh, fill, fill colors, that some are styles, and some others are location or uh, the how it's, um, it's gonna be displayed, like uh, X coordinates of the center of the um, annually or the Y coordinates of the center. Um, and then you, in this case, for example, in this kind of clip, you're also going to have an inner radius, outer radius. So all that is going to be up to you um, how you uh, conf configure it. Um, so we said, um, you know, glyphs are ones, axes are another ones. Um, and we have also uh, tools and a bunch of, of widgets that we can also use. Um, so here is also the explanation of all the tools that we're, we're going to go uh, a little bit more in, deep, in depth into um, the tools later. So you know uh, what's available for you to use. Um, some of the widgets too. Um, and there's uh, buttons um, and drop down menus, um, uh, dialogue, uh, tables. Icons and where do they appear? So, so you can use them. So it's up to you. These are all op objects that are available for you to use, right? It's gonna depend on your design of your visualization. Uh, if you want 
to add some kind of widget to interact with your plot. So we're going to see some examples here. For, for example, this one's, um, this one's a, a um, table widget, which has this um, table columns. Uh, you're going to see widgets are described here, the bokeh models widgets. I've tried to have um, all the sections are equivalent to a, um, a file in the bokeh repository, so you can um, you know, relate the names with the namespace in the, in the repository. So models widgets are, are all these, the data table, uh, table columns. Um, and in this case here, you're going to see the, the example here. Uh, which is this um, table of your data and a plot, and then uh, you can select a range uh, that filters, um, and then um, if you select, you're going to be able to, uh, I don't know if you see it very well here, but uh, they're kind of, um, the ones that you don't select or uh, have a, a lower alpha, so you, you can, uh, get to know which ones you're, you're selecting. Um, and this is one type of, of widget that's available to you. But there, um, there are others. Um, this was kind of the example that I was following through the um, part on how to um, add things to your glyph, add a glyph, add a layout, add tools. And then you add all those objects into your document, and you uh, write uh, out the file. So, also in the the bokeh examples also fill, follow this structure that I, that I'm following on the types of examples that you can find um, in the models uh, in the examples for some reason they're, they're called glyphs. And here you can see all um, the examples available. Um, and so you can see um, another um, type of um, uh, widget. Um, let's see. I think. A lot of some of the widgets uh, are usually the widgets require the server because you want to use them in order to interact with your data in some way. Uh, let's say um, you know if I if I press a button, update the data source behind it, um, you know, and, pl and plot it again. So a lot of them um, require the bokeh server running, um, and we'll we'll see some of them uh, in just uh, a little bit. Um, so again, this is a, another simple example of the Iris data set and how you can create you you know create your own with this low level interface of circles, adding circles to with the add lift, the layout, uh, and then the same with the you know your grid if you want um, how you want to um, configure your the tickers. Uh, and what kind of tools do you want to add into it? So this one would be just if you want to run this, uh, you know, the ones that are not notebooks but are um, files, uh, py files, then you can just do um, Python and run the script, and that generates the the plot in this HTML page for you. Um, so here we just have two, which are the ones that we've we've added manually. So, As I've been mentioning uh, with these examples, you have um, three 
uh, output uh, possibilities. Uh, one is this, you know, if you, you're using the notebook, you can output to the notebook. If you just want a static HTML file, you can just um, output to a file. Uh, these uh, methods, out, output notebook, output file, output server, are available across the different uh, interfaces. So you can use them in, ch in charts, in plotting, and in the models um, API. So, um, and then uh, charts also adds uh, uh, dot show, um, which is uh, also going to output. Um, you know, you, you can add if you want server, notebook, or uh, file uh, as a as an attribute of your chart, and then just show when it's going to do what what, uh, what whatever you've passed. Um, so uh, the interesting part of here is going to be the um, looking at the um, server and so um, when do you want the bokeh server? Um, Um, so we're going to see the resources here. So again, here in the um, I.O. you have the uh, explain the output file, output notebook, output server. Um, and and the book server is meant for um, this kind of capabilities. When you want to publish a notebook and have um, other users be able to access the plot that you're serving. Um, when you want to do things like uh, streaming data, uh, when you need to do some kind of down sampling or some kind of uh, process um, uh, before you, um, you send it to the uh, client side. Uh, and that's when you have very large data sets and you want to think, do things like abstract rendering or um, you know, more complex um, kind of uh, downsampling mechanisms to be able to uh, visualize uh, those types of, of um, data sets. And then sometimes when you have like some kind of um, inter um, dashboard or interaction that uh, you, it cannot be done with the uh, interactions that no, don't need the server. So we've, we've been adding more non-server um, interactions. So we can kind of relieve the overhead of having um, to have a, a bokeh server to run some of the examples. Um, and kind of like the idea behind it is you have, um, you know, be able to have a communication open between the object graph in the client side and the object graph, the Python object graph in the server side. Um, we're developing the, this, um, uh, documentation right now, but there's a lot of uh, good examples. Um, so in each of, in the charts, plotting, and glyphs, uh, if you go inside of um, each of them, you'll see that um, you have uh, always three folders, a file, a notebook, and a server. Um, and the, um, the, the servers where, where you're going to have these server side examples. Not, not all that say server uh, add an interactivity, because sometimes you just want the server to be able to, be able to manage different users um, hitting the same document and being uh, kind of a bokeh server, the, the endpoint that um, shares everything. Um, so if we go to the server, um, there's some uh, examples here, and in order to start the um, the bokeh server, you just need to run bokeh server, and that starts the bokeh server for you. Then in another. Uh, 
um, in another uh, um, Um, yeah, so you can point to the URL where, where that uh, server exists. So you need uh, you need that server running somewhere. It's it's up to you. Uh, so if you want to be the one managing it uh, and the one uh, you know. Uh, so you have both options, and that's what uh, we're going to uh, see next. Um, so <clears throat> here in, 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 embed, in, in order to embed this, right now we've just seen notebooks and files. In order to embed them into your own application, you have several uh, options. Uh, one is just getting the, as I said, what you need to, in order to embed is just like a script and a div and the Bokeh.js library. Um, so there's a function that's called components inside uh, Bokeh. Then you pass a plot object, and that returns that script and that div. Um, and then, in a for example, a Flask example, example where you uh, render a template, you can pass the you know the um, the template that you're using and just these two. Um, script and div, uh, and then add them in your in your HTML template, and using a template engine to add them um, this way. Um, if you're using it this way, uh, you have two options on how to, you're going to serve the Bokeh JS. Uh, if you want to serve it inline and have all the J, um, JS blob. Uh, inside of the HTML page, or you want to serve it through, our, through the CDN, um, and then you can pass, you can add another, um, another variable as the plot resources, and add it also in your uh, embed HTML page. And that's going to add the files from the CDN. Or if you want to just like um, add them yourself manually with the links, uh, these are, this is the URL to do so. Um, another option is you want to serve it. Um, there's the autoload server, which allows you to um, sh store all the bokeh plots into the server, and then just passing a tag. And this um, tag here is uh, going to contain everything, everything uh, that needs in order to uh, to render the plot. Um, so that's uh, a neat thing if you want. Uh, to use the server, even you can use it even for static plots. So, a little bit more about the server and some more uh, examples. Um, uh, the Taylor suit. No, sorry. Um, so, for example, the one of the widgets that that we saw was like this uh, button here, and that just like does um, randomized data. So, if I click it, just um, goes back to the uh, back to the to the server, uh, uses some Python process uh, to do something, just you know, get new random points, and then sends that back to the uh, to the client. Um, so this is one type of, of widget, and that's one of the cases where you do need the Bokeh server um, to run. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, can can you repeat the question? So, so basically, um, what I want to do, um, show how to render the div. Yes. 
So uh, the JSON is actually what gets uh, app. So the div and the, the script and the div, the div is just a tag of a location, right? Uh, and an ID of the plot. And the, um, and the, the JSON, the script is just uh, um, some JavaScript with a JSON blob. And that's what's going to render all the models um, inside. So you're already getting the, um, the JSON blob. Um, so you could manage that as, as you'd like. Um, so another... Um, uh, um, so another one is like if you want to interact um, also between plots and uh, even like if I select one, uh, you know, one circle have some interaction with another uh, with another plot, um, and then uh, you know this uh, clicking into one uh, plot updates the other one uh, also with. Um, so. Um, the question is uh, talk about scalability. Um, so, um, so that's going to depend. I'm not it's scalability in terms of how uh, how many users you can, um, or scalability in terms of the amount of data set, like how large the data set. The second one. Uh, so, how large the data set? Um, so, more or less, um, you can have around thirty. 30,000 points, um, I think that's kind of like the, the max that you, that's allowed. After that, you're going to need to do some uh, downsampling or some abstract rendering technique in order to get, because it's just going to be a matter of not just uh, loading all those models, because each of the glyphs are going to be models inside uh, your, your, your um, HTML and page, right? That's also like a limiting. But also in terms of viewing things, uh, if you're trying to just output um, points, you have 30,000. Well, the visualization itself, you're probably going to have uh, not enough pixels to actually see it, see it right? Um, so that's when you need some kind of um, alpha, uh, you know, Integration in order to see, to get a sense of um, distribution of points, um, and that's when you use um, some some you know either downsampling technique or um, or abstract rendering, which is a library. It's it's part of Bokeh, but it's being it, it's still in a research phase and it's being developed. Um, there's several examples um, on the documentation. Uh, let me see if I find it. Um, it's called abstract rendering. Um, and there was a there is um there exists um a tutorial just uh, on abstract rendering that was given. Um, that's not this. Mainly on on uh, contours, um, alpha uh, degradation to um, to get that sense. Uh, so let me see if I find it. Mm. I'll, I'll add that ref. It's the reference guide. Forgot where where it is. I just found it um, recently, but um, it's it's actually the core of the abstract rendering exists in an, in a separate repository. But I, I can also add that information. Um, so let me show you a, a couple of other. Um, Thing that was also gonna use. So 
So for example, another another um, cool one that um, has this um, selection option that I can select uh, you know a couple of um, my points and then I have another plot uh, next to it that uh, gets um, um, gets updated with the, those values, just those values and you can see um, the distribute you know kind of make that exploratory analysis. Um, And then there's the. Um, so, so that's that's sort of like a filter, right? So you have the drop down option to set a filter by category. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, find them. Um, the reason I ask about that is because I'm uh, more interested in what you guys have done with Jitter. Because um, I, I use a package on the far side, and it's. The filter doesn't work with jittering points, and I'm wondering if you guys have taken care of that on on both yeah. Um. So, what do you mean by jittering? Um. So, if you have a lot of points that just had, you want to see the overall a lot of different points, but a lot of them have the same value. So, you just want to see that, for example, at that particular point, it's not just one point; it's actually nine different points that are the same value, so you do jittering that actually slightly alters the position of every single one of the points. Oh, okay, I see. So um, I think we've taken the route, uh, the, the route of um, doing more of uh, the down, uh, uh, this abstract rendering technique where you can see those distributions uh, by changing the alpha. So you know like how many points are there Based on how dark uh, the region is, uh, rather than like uh, moving them apart, because then you're. Um, I think that's the 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 approach uh, we've taken. Um, so I think. Okay, let me see. Okay, server here. So another of the examples of using the uh, bokeh server is when you have some kind of data that gets updated and you want to update the visualization with it. Um, so uh, this is uh, also a, an example that we have uh, that exists um, in the you know by using um, the the bokeh server um, and. Right, right here just uses a an infinite loop of uh, changing the data, so you can see uh, how that uh, gets gets updated. Um, there's another example um, here. So we have the server examples. Um, so. so this is another. Uh, I think you were. Someone was asking about the drop-down possibilities. Um, so for example, this is a, a data set on the distribution of a population in different places of the world for female and male and age. Uh, age range, and uh, we have this possibility to filter by year, location, um, um, and so we can select uh, several uh, places um, 
and that gets updated uh, through the bucket server. Um, so if we look at the Um, in order to do uh, kind of these more complex examples, there's more code involved than like the, the simple ones because you have to take care of updating all the bokeh objects accordingly um, to the, the changes that, that occur. Um, so in this case, we have, uh, as I said, in the cases of um, servers, you have the notion of a session. And a session is a, a snapshot uh, of the document at a, is a, a connection to the um, to the document from one user. So several users can be connected, can try and visualize the same document. They each get their own session. So if you're, um, or they could get the same section session if you wanted, if you pass it the, the appropriate um, session, right? So that you can um, visualize independently or uh, in common if, if you wanted to. Um, so in this case, we get the data, the, we initialize the variables of uh, the drop-down menu uh, with some year or location. Um, this one here is the generation of the, the plot itself. And uh, as you see, it looks a lot, of, um, it has the same structure that what I mentioned in the models uh, part with um, uh, generating a plot and then adding all these different either layouts or glyphs, um, uh, legend uh, and returning the plot. Um, then you initialize the um, the um, column data sources, and we have a place here when we're going to update the pyramid information. We're going to change those data sources, the data in those column data sources, and that's what um, triggers the change in the plot, changing that um, column data source. Um, so there's two, I don't know if it's, there's two plots here. This one's what the one that's called pyramid. Um, the one in the bottom, it's what's called um, the pr um, prediction, the this source, um, source predicted. Um, and um, so we're gonna update the pyramid it's just by updating this data in the column data source. Now what triggers the, the change? Um, so when you change the data, you're gonna uh, update the population data, update the, the pyramid data. Um, and then you're gonna store in, in the session that you're seeing, store this new, uh, this document uh, with those changes. Um, and you get like, kind of these functions of like, when uh, I change the year, I'm gonna update the data. When I change location, I'm also gonna update the data. And then you get this um, layout of um, the select or the um, drop-down menus. Um, on change means when those change, um, I'm gonna uh, update the, um, the values. Uh, and then I have the controls in a H box, which is a layout mechanism of saying uh, horizontal box, and the V box is a vertical box. And then I'm gonna have the controls in the vertical box, the pyramid plot, and the population plot. And I'm, I'm gonna return this layout. Um, so in the document, uh, this document, I'm gonna add the layout, and then it just like um, call update data. And uh, um, there's some, some nice uh, utils to uh, view links, uh, and um, pull the document to see the changes. So, um, I've sh shown that one. This one's similar to the one I mentioned earlier. Um, Um, 
So another another important section is the um, compatibility um, layer. And as I said, uh, if you have old matplotlib, um, seaborn, um, or ggplot uh, that you have available, um, and for, we have this simple example here of a matplotlib um, figure, um, just by changing this last line to um, uh, this MPL2 bokeh, you get the bokeh plot of it. Um, that's a pretty neat uh, feature we have um, here. Compat. So I have all my Python notebooks. Um, uh, so, um, up till here, it's all matplotlib. And then I, ha I do this show matplotlib to bokeh. So, um, I'm going to get, yeah. Uh, how do you manage to uh, reload the JavaScript inside the Python notebook, for example, to go from the, when you access directly the JavaScript interface from the Python notebook? You have to sort of like run the JavaScript code to generate. Oh, you mean how it's done? Um, so it's loaded. Uh, see here, uh, it says uh, when you call um, bokeh plot plotting in um, in the notebook, uh, it runs the the loading of the JS into it. Oh, the JSON that um, so. If we look at here uh, on the um, JavaScript um, on on the HTML, we are gonna find the um, all the um, IPython notebook stuff, but then also um, the bokeh um, part. So um, if I look at the uh, bokeh canvas, um, you know, it, bokeh generates all these like plot. Um, Div ID, and then uh, with this div and the JavaScript, all these different um, divs and tables and classes get generated with the bokeh plot wrapper, uh, canvas, uh, canvas wrapper, uh, etc. So all these are the, and then this is generated with the, a script that's uh, up here. So there's a lot of. Um, uh, that's one of the pain points of the the notebook. That we we have to um, uh, make sure that we don't, uh, you know, that we're we're compatible. That's why there's the the special uh, output notebook that's different from the output file because uh, you you might be some maybe namespace crashes between the uh, IPython notebook, uh, you know, styling and yours, uh, and things like that. So let me see if I find the. So you can export the um, you can export each of the plot uh, uh, as an image. So uh, I'm not sure that if you use the IPython notebooks. Uh, for you know format exporters that it's gonna automatically do that for you of generating uh, I don't think it, it does right now of uh, generating you know creating the uh, image uh, format file then putting it where it's appropriate um, yeah so maybe it's this script. So okay, here's the blob. So this um, this one here, it's hard to see. Uh, you can look at it yourself in each of the uh, if any of the examples, and you this uh, style here. This is the bokeh CSS um, style, and then there's the um, JavaScript, the bokeh um, JavaScript right here, and this is all what. Uh, what generates the, um, you know, 
course, the and here's the so that's the CSS, the JS, and this is the the script for your particular plot. And you see, you have um, let's see. Here. So um, you have the model ID, you have the, the type, the plot, and then you have all these different models that we have appended in one document uh, and with all their attributes. Um, so this is all the, like the, the blob that gets generated that then the JS and the CSS can interpret to make the plot. So this is the, uh, so this is what, what gets uh, rendered. Um, this thing here. Uh, so that does that answer your question? Okay. Um, so we were looking at uh, different examples for the compatibility um, layer, and we have the um, here this one here. Um, so as we said, we have this uh, matplotlib figure in Bokeh. Um, there's a you know. This um, line collection which is also written in matplotlib, and you just add this um, last line um, to make the change. Um, also, there's also these polygons um, uh, that were also generated with matplotlib that can translate to uh, bokeh. Um, there's also pandas. Um, nope. Pandas can also uh, plot also through um, matplotlib, and then you can um, make that transformation too. So um, when you're exploring uh, with your data frames, uh, you cannot just generate the, the static view, but also these ones, uh, these bokeh plots to be able to, to share, which is uh, pretty neat. And then there's this other library that's also used in statistical analysis that's called Seaborn. Um, and uh, you can also use that. Um, you get these Seaborn-like uh, bokeh plots, uh, and all you write up, you know, all all this is comes from the um, comes from the Seaborn library, and even um, Seaborn library has this violin plot, so you can also uh, use it to, you know, and translate it to uh, a bokeh if there's a feature that you want in that library and you still want to publish it and you don't have capabilities in it, um, then you just like uh, do that translation to bokeh. Um, and that's, that's it. So another thing I wanted to talk about is the, um, um, uh, as also here you have the where in the documentation you can find more information about it and the examples. Um, the final section was about uh, looking deeper into the, all the tools that are available, uh, what kind of interactions are possible without needing the Bokeh server, uh, how you can lay out the different plots in your page, and a little bit about the styling. So here are all the, the tools that are um, available in, in Bokeh. Um, there are tools that are uh, about pan, drag, drag, and drag your plot to click around um, to uh, when you scroll uh, and some actions and what they call inspectors. So I think the best way to understand what each one does just by looking at a plot that has um, several of them. So here in tools. I have the color plot in a notebook. So, um, so here's one. This one here um, in the in the as I said in the models library to um, add a tool, you use that plot dot add um, add tool. If you're using the plotting API, it's easier. You can just um, set the tools. Uh, like with a string and with the name of the tool you want, um, and and that's gonna 
that's going to set the tools for you. Uh, and you pass the tools into your figure, and that's going to add all those, those the, the, to the available tools. So the first one is pen. Pen is about moving, uh, being able to move your uh, plot around. Um, you have the lasso select, um, which is uh, a way of selecting just a couple. Um, you have the uh, box zoom, which I can use to uh, zoom in, in a, with a box. Um, I, we've seen that one before, the resize one. So I can resize the plot, interact with the wheel zoom, which is going to let, let me with, use my, uh, you know, zoom in and out with with a wheel. Um, tap, which is going to make be able to select um, different points in my data set. Um, the um, reset button, which uh, resets it to the uh, like the starting point, um, you can also, um, as we said, save and preview. So if you've done something, you can now, um, you know, save images, and you can uh, decide how you want to save it, a PNG, whatever. And then there's this uh, cross. The crosshair is these like two lines uh, that we see here when I'm moving. I can deselect that, and then I don't have it anymore. Um, um, so um, these are all the tools, tools that are available. And as we said, if you want just some of them in using the models library, you add them. If you're using the plotting, you can just like um, have a string with the list with all the uh, tools separated by the comma that will um, add the, the appropriate, you know, the, the tools that you want. Um, so for the lasso effect, any other plot that's like a grid like nearby that's being affected by that lasso, like it's showing the distribution of whatever you lasso. Yeah, so it's not going back to the server for that data, is it? So uh, no, it doesn't need to, no. Okay. Because that's already known in the um, uh, But on the any filter it is going back to the server. In any filter, yeah, because you're performing then a Python operation with pandas to, uh, or what, whatever you're using uh, to do so. I think I had left one open. Um, so that's why we're adding more uh, interactions that um, don't need uh, the bokeh server. And we just use like, um, this the callbacks is pretty new um, after, I think it was added after, um, uh, PyCon, in order to add more of these uh, interactions with widgets without needing, you know, a running server in the in the back end. Um, so in the interactions, uh, I also have the. We can see different examples here. Um, so um, there's several uh, uh, different interaction possibilities. That's what's called uh, between plots. One's called uh, linked brushing, which means if I select uh, items of the selection of items on one plot, it's going to allow me to do something in another plot with them. So, um, for example, if this last is select, if I, uh, you know, select these ones here, I'm able to see that they correspond to these values up here in the other plot. Um, uh, if I, you know, uh, look at, uh, you know, this um, couple of here, I can see that there are these two lines. Um, and that is happening without the need of the bokeh server running. Um, link pan panning um, is just being able to um, uh, move them around and that they will like uh, all, all the different plots will like also move around um, uh, the in the um, user guide there's a good um, uh, there's a good explanation on these available interactions and like with an example it's always easier um, to understand we've seen this link panning and li link brushing uh, and then there's um, this um, actions that you can use. For example, um, 
This one here tells you click the dots and click the dots um, with this code here is gonna, um, you know, you're gonna be able to select with the tab tool and then the action that's gonna come from it, it's open a specific URL. So if I click this dot here and I have internet, uh, then, uh, so uh, then it's going to open a URL as I as I click it. So I have this action possibility um, available to me too. Um, then on the widget side, um, things like sliders, uh, you can actually add this uh, callback um, as uh, as a class. Uh, it's a uh, it's a bokeh model now, um, and you can actually uh, add the code that you want to run as your um, as your callback, um, and if I move this slider around, you know this is gonna uh, do something. It's gonna run this code as I change the value. Um, so that's also uh, a possibility, um, and this is without the need uh, with the bokeh server, which is something that has changed just recently um, to be able to use this callback now. Um, for for selections, um, you can uh, you know select things here, um, and it's gonna get uh, the same data and just like the ones that uh, that you want, and, and output this uh, in the in the other plot. Um, and you have here the the code that gets uh, executed when I do a select in in the first one. So. I think that's it. Uh, inter the simple interact basic. Um, this is another uh, that makes use of the IPython available widgets. Um, also with the combination of the bokeh uh, visualization, and I can here now select uh, you know what function I want, um, and then what you know the different parameters. Uh, that I can uh, select. Um, so that's another example. Um, there's um, different uh, layout possibilities. As I said, there's the, the V plot. So if you want to combine plots one on top of the other one, uh, just use the vplot and uh, set the different plots. Uh, then there's the hplot, um, which does the same, but horizontally. And then you can also use the grid plot, uh, and you can select what which plot goes in into each grid, and also have a non a non plot, so you have an empty an empty space if you like. Um, so uh, in here we're gonna see layouts uh, like the. This is an example of the grid plot. So you can, uh, you know, create the different figures uh, that we saw. This is using the plotting API. The different figures that you want, uh, you uh, add uh, in each figure a different glyph, the annular wage, the Bezier, the quad, and then you, uh, with the grid plot, you just uh, specify um, what do you want in in each in each place of your grid. So if I run this. Um, I'm gonna see this, um, um, you know, four different uh, plots uh, with two empty spaces in in the grid, um, and you know, and you can arrange kind of a dashboard-like style of your plots and how you want them distributed in the in the page. Um, and the final section is on styling styling dashboards. Um, and there's a all the attributes of styling are available uh, here, and you can see all the line properties that you want, color, width, um, you know, alpha, if you, how transparent you want them, um, how you want to fill the colors of the um, different glyphs, text properties, so if you want to change the font of the title, you can do so. 
Um, uh, so uh, here's also in the plot itself, you can change the dimensions. We've seen that. Change the title, of font, um, and color and style. Uh, the background of your plot. Um, the outside border, uh, if you want different style, you can create your own. Uh, you know, if you don't like the default style of a bokeh and you want to create your own, uh, you know, you, you can also do that. Um, an outline on the plot can also be changed. The different glyphs can, you know, have different uh, contour and, and filling. Um, you can also uh, change the axis, the color of the axis line, the color of the values. Um, the you know the the bound the boundaries of the of the axis so you just get uh, you know the the middle ones um, how you want the ticks the tick lines of your plot so if you want them red the semi ticks yellow uh, that's also possible they're all all these properties are exposed to you uh, you know just by doing uh, the p which is the figure uh, the axis. You know, and major, and then there's uh, all the properties are are exposed in that way because they're there's, they're all objects, um, and there's the attributes of of your objects. Um, so you also can change the different tick formatters, you know, percentage wise, or uh, you know, um, if you want um, some scientific uh, notation. You, if you want them, uh, you know, with some orientation, like uh, the major labor orientation, if you want them, uh, you know, vertical aligned. Um, the the grid lines also, if you want uh, no grids, or if you want them with a certain property, um, bands, um, you know, different also boundaries. Um, the the legend, you can also decide where. Uh, where's the orientation of the legend, bottom left, top right. Mm. The, the, actually, the text of the legend can also be changed. Uh, so there's, um, you know, you can de definitely um, style your plot uh, as you like uh, with all the, you know, properties and make it look, um, uh, you know, look, um, nice with whatever website or web page that matches the the CSS that you're using. Uh, so I think we I have five minutes for questions or something like that. So if someone has a question now. Just uh, a bit about the plans. Uh, first of all, you know, I still have something that is similar to the image. Uh, but uh, now right now there is an image but it's not exactly the same. It doesn't have a color bar for the show levels. Are there plans to implement something like this at the graph or the in charts interface? And the second question is about uh, supportive map projection. It's like this supportive map projection degrading from future plans to future plans in the year. And uh, when one can expect to see that? So um, there, you had two questions. The first one is uh, image support. Like like oh, okay. okay. So uh, that I don't think that's in like the uh, the next uh, in the roadmap right now. Um, there has been like other priorities um, to get it um, uh, running and and kind of like there's also kind of the the notion that uh, that this, that um, that or at, at least the priority that Bokeh has been on getting that information on your data using other techniques, not um, uh, so kind of like if you project it and get like a sense of like density rather than uh, that that uh, you know those dimensions like that. So um, and the question about the the second question. Uh, was on uh, the map projections. So right now, uh, in the geospace, uh, in Bokeh, there's uh, what's called the GMAP plot, which is just a, a Google map plot that you can use um, uh, and, add, and, add, and add any glyph on top of it. And then there was a, um, 
an integration with um, GeoJS, uh, but that's, uh, that was kind of a, a collaboration with uh, the GeoJS guys, and uh, not not sure we've had users of the the GeoJS port. Um, and then you have the be able like making the contours yourself with patches. So that's kind of the state of the um, any uh, geo art. And I can show you the the um, the GMAP plot. Um, Um, not a lot of. Uh, I don't think we we should. We have to add an example because it's something people have been adding, and we haven't uh, have a, a like a visual in the gallery. And I think there's a lot of people that are asking for that. Um, um, I think it's close. There's the GMAP plot. Let me see. Glyphs maps. No. So this is the, the the capabilities right now. So you can add layers on top of this uh, Google Map, uh, and you can add, uh, you know, uh, you could add polygons or you could add uh, lines, uh, any of the existing glyphs. Um, and you have the if you zoom out a lot, uh, you know, just it's not capable to identify exactly where it is. But um, so that's. Yeah, that's, that's some some mapping um, capabilities there. Yeah. So yeah, right now like um, the the kind of the low level API is they're ready and you can create uh, you know create your own and even uh, more of like novel graphics uh, you know custom um, things and you can see some of the gallery um, like you know this you know this thing here's like the 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 code of it for it. Um, and it's this one's using the the plotting um, the plotting interface, and it, there's just like a lot of style changes. But you have like it's just like Angular, um, the circle, adding text. Um, so this can already be, you know, can already be done. Yeah, it's just a matter of people generating more examples, so and people sharing them and adding them to the gallery and having some some kind of uh, common space for uh, you know people. Um, to look at easily to examples that look at similar to what their their needs are, um, you know I think that's probably um, where where D three really has uh, uh, strived having uh, the Michael uh, the box page with all the examples that has made a lot of people just like you know you getting it and just like changing the pieces that you need for your your custom um, and kind of like the idea is that we have. Um, Develop the like the foundations of it, right? Now the models API is stable, the um, and now it's a matter of uh, the plotting is stable and kind of like the the charts interface is kind of wanting to have those like um, 
you know, having those examples of like you could create, you know, you can create custom um, uh, these cu custom novel graphics, and then just providing your user with a uh, you know a nice uh, wrapper around it that they could just like shove their uh, their 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 data in and reuse it. So that you know, if we have more uh, support of people uh, helping build those reusable charts or um, posting more of their their visualizations and code, I think that that will start having more of that. Uh, you know that what D three has had. Um, so yeah, the the um, it's a you can submit a, a pull request. Uh, that the it's um, the website is the the docs that are. Um, so if you go to the here, the on the Sphinx uh, page, here's where the the source of the. Uh, docs are so you could um, um, there's a ser server um, gallery with some um, and um, so it's um, you know if you have examples like we are, are accepting uh, PRs on uh, you know on more examples of what people are doing um, there's a lot, a lot of the examples that we have in the gallery are actually made by uh, users and not, uh, not as um, like I think. There's like you know, you can do things like you know this uh, a periodic table or um, I think like the the heat map. Um, Um, so yeah, I think now it's up to the community to start generating more more content and more examples for uh, you know to get into that that stage of usability that uh, D3 has and. <laughs> um, so you can. Um, I think that the roadmap is uh, released uh, here. Um, there was uh, here in release notes and roadmap. Uh, so you can see what are the goals for like the summer. Um, I don't. I don't see. I haven't seen a. a um, comments on um, you know there's uh, of course there's long term to do list and uh, we can add uh, those kind of of um, you know wishes there but like realistically for the goals on this this summer uh, they're uh, basically this um, so no not I don't see it in the short term um, but if there's you know. It's kind of also starting the conversation in like the mailing list and kind of pushing also libraries um, to, to do what the users, uh, you know, fulfilling the pain points of the users that are having with other libraries and kind of trying to help there. So you, you should start the conversation in the mailing list. Okay. I think we're... Um, so if anyone has any other questions, we're going to leave it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Christine.